Hey, uh, what a special moment it is. Just wanted to kick off and say thanks so much. I know you're really selective with your time and who you, you know, work with, but huge honour, man. Really, really cool to have this moment. We shot some content today and um, also just the conversation we've been having in the lead up around how selective you are around who you align with and just say it's it's really special, particularly for me, someone who's obsessed with uh, rugby uh, league in this context and um, yeah I've seen you obviously do amazing things on the field but then to just get to hang out and shoot the shit a bit has been really special so I just wanted to kick off and say thanks man. Well thank you yeah I spoke about it a little bit and I said I was nervous which I still am but yeah I haven't really shared my story too much with too too many people I like to keep things pretty close um, but um, like the other podcast that I went on this one aligns with me uh, very much so as well so Thank you for having me on. Oh, awesome, man. Yeah. And yeah, well, like I said to you, I'm also a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, let's just be ourselves and wherever we go, we go and um, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. And yeah, let's also just invite in a bit of fun and banter and play in yeah. that as well. And um, yeah, just thought I'd begin, man. We've, we've got, you know, a bunch of listeners that you know, a league supporters, but also a bunch who, you know, support AFL or, or you know, not even support um, uh, into sport generally. I'd love to just kind of kick it back to early days. What were the, the origins for KP? Um, I think early days, I moved around a lot um, for different reasons. My dad's work, he was in the mines. So I was born in Port Hedland, moved to Mount Isa, moved to New Zealand, moved back to Australia, um, Mackay, Brisbane, Townsville, now in Newcastle. So I've moved around a lot. Yeah, wow. Um, one for family, um, but yeah, mostly dad's work. And then in high school, it was all for, I guess, like um, my different opportunities with footy and, and rugby league and rugby union. Um, but I guess back in New Zealand, uh, I was just surrounded by family. Um, my dad's like one of 11. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I had cousins everywhere. I've got more cousins now that have come out the woodwork, woodworks, but... <laughs> Um, that was really what I grew up with was family, sport. Um, and then my sister was born when I was about 12 or 13. So we moved back to Australia and yeah, through different opportunities moved around. How did you navigate, uh, social life? Like as you know, sports, obviously a great tool to go in community and build friends. And I know you played a lot of sports when you were young as well, but how did that impact you as like a young, not even a teenager moving around so much? I was pretty lucky. I think sport gives you the ability uh, to meet people that are like-minded, have the same goal, have the same interests. So that's never really been an issue for me and it's something that um, I've never been really scared of or afraid of is, is to go to a new place and meet new people and um, experience new things. Obviously, being a big part of my childhood, that's probably the, the way I am now is, mm. is I still have that uh, mindset towards it all. But um, I loved it. Like I... I've got friends from everywhere um, that in different periods of my life, you know, they were my best friends and you move on and you grow up and you still talk to them though, you still keep in contact with them. But I think sport has always been a tool for me to, mm. to connect and, um, yeah, so I guess I connect with people. Yeah, and the, the beautiful thing about sport when it's done well, it like doesn't matter your background, where you come from. Exactly. Like it's like it's this, you know, when it's done well, equal playing field mm. and you're just like – in the teams of people who you're like, I would just never hang out with you ever. Yeah, um, yeah. but that's it. like different schools, you know, club teams outside. You're all you're all there for the same reason. Yeah. Um, I think that's what sport was like. That's why I loved it so much as a kid. You, that's why you play the game is to to play with your friends and, um, you know, uh, sport was heavily involved in my life early, and so were those connections with people. Yeah, and how did your like? I know your dad's been a big kind of pillar in your life. How did your dad instill values for you when you're particularly those younger years and particularly is like when you're talented mm. and yeah there's so much seduction around you or to pull you out of like what's important how did you navigate that with your dad uh he's taught me everything my old man um like literally everything and then i can i can sort of look back now and um i understand why he did certain things and uh, the way i was disciplined and stuff like that and i think the main things he sort of preached was um like he'd always say, love what you do um, and I'll support you. So if you wanted to go and play marbles or 
if you wanted to go and do dominoes or man, what, whatever you wanted to do, if you do it to 100% and you love what you do, um, he'll support me. I think that made me a passionate person, which I think I am, and mm. he instilled passion in me, um, certain love for things. Hard work was always one, um, hard work and humility. He'd never, he'd never really tell me to go for a run or tell me to do this. He'd sort of challenge me. So it's, have you been for a run today? Are you, are you, you know what I mean? Like he'd make that decision mine. Um, humility was a big one, always has been, always will be. Never sort of getting ahead of yourself. Um, and there was uh, plenty of examples of <laughs> when that happened. I remember when I scored my first try for um, Churchy and the way I celebrated was a little bit arrogant. Yeah, um, what did you do? I just scored and got up and kind of looked like I was the man. Yeah, yeah. And just a little thing like that, um, yeah, wasn't wasn't okay. And in, in, um, he wasn't happy with that. But a lot of respect, people shaking people's hands, looking them in the eyes. A lot of who I am today, I, I definitely credit to my dad, um, his values, like my family. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. I think that's the thing I've, I've learned about like probably, you know, as a cheeky teenager who pushed the boundaries at times myself, like when I got grilled by my parents and in this case like my dad, it would be things like that were values orientated that I didn't mm. necessarily understand at the time. Yeah. But then I eventually got to the point where I matured and I was like, oh, I'm so glad I got in trouble like that, you know. Mm. So my dad could just be like, what are you doing? Like and just not from a like a place of shaming but just a place of like, hey, have a think about this. How do you want to personally respond next time? Yeah. And that, as you said before, like getting us to think about it opposed yeah. to going you're like pointing the finger. Well, that's how you – your decisions or the choices you make from certain things is who, what makes you who you are. Absolutely. Um. My dad, like he was always my idol, my role model, the the person that I, the hero in, in my life. To be honest, like mm. he taught me, he was my coach for soccer, my coach for golf, my coach for rugby, coach for everything. Um, instilled like great values in me that I, you know, I'm glad that he did, and yeah. I'm definitely a product of my old man. And um, even now, he's still very heavily involved in my life. Um, and yeah, he definitely steps outside the box a little bit. Sometimes he'll text me after a game and try and tell me how to play. Yeah. Which I don't think is, <laughs> is in his realm anymore, like yeah. maybe back in the day. But yeah, I know that everything that he does is out of the goodness of his heart. And he mm. just wants what's best for me. Um, I think in this in- industry and yeah. the position that I'm in, it's not always like that. It's, it's People want to see me do well for different reasons, for if it benefits them or – yeah. Whatever. So he's him and my mum was probably the only two people that purely want me to succeed for me. Yeah. Which I think was nice. Like I'm lucky that I've got that. Oh man, absolutely. And you know, with someone who with you is like such a profile, but also people who I, I can only imagine come to you wanting things, like mm. almost treating you like a a commodity or a brand opposed to a person. Yeah. Does that happen? Yeah, definitely. And yeah. that's why I've been so shut off to doing certain things in the past and. Definitely as a family, I think we're like that. We're a very close family um, due to certain things that have happened in the past. We don't really let too many too many people in. Yeah. But also I like, that's, I like to have a close, like a small circle as well. I think yeah. that's helped me be the person I am and get to where I am because I've mm. got a close, small circle that I rely on. Um, but yeah, definitely. There's definitely a lot of times that people come to me for them. Yeah. Um, and you just got to learn to say no and learn to – weed out what's real and what's not. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I've kind of learned from watching, it was actually it's a weird segue, but I met Prince Harry through through our work and um, wow. have met him three times and um, I got an award from the Queen in Buckingham Palace, which is a whole other story for another time. But meeting like Prince Harry, I was like, well, that guy just met me like it was his first time meeting someone ever and he was so present and engaged, so yeah. engaged and it was so genuine. And then he's probably met about a thousand other people that day and it's that same level of like presence. Mm. And I, I just got me thinking like if he has an off day, you know, people, f- people remember that, yeah, you yeah. know, and then that becomes a story that gets sold to whoever, to the media or whatever. Yeah. Has that, like how do you navigate that? I'm not Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Prince of um, <laughs> In terms of when I meet people? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think it's just in my nature to be quite um, friendly and personable and mm. um, I definitely have my days as well. 
Um, and it depends on the environment that I'm in as well. Like I, in really corporate environments, I don't yeah. feel very comfortable. So I almost am putting on like a facade. But um, like things like today I really enjoy and it's stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit. But again, I guess back to like what my dad taught me is just be respectful. You know, look people in the eye, shake their hands, say hello. And off that, you know, you sort of you sort of settle in and yeah, yeah, yeah. Building. But yeah, I I definitely need to get better with it. Um, can get better with it, and it depends on the environment that I'm in. Nice. Like I feel like in the footy world, we do we do get exposed to a lot of yeah different events, different things, a lot of people. I'm no good with names, um, but yeah, I guess having those values of just being respectful helps. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I saw it today. You know, you walked in, said hi to everyone on the set. And yeah, man, it's inspiring because we see so many different types of personalities, talent, mm. players, etc. And then just to watch how you just went about it so quietly, so humbly was like, I just saw what you just said in action. So yeah, it was, it was I was like, this guy's a dude. He's, <laughs> he's on it. Dude, yeah. um, man, so if we go back a little bit, you, you come over to Australia, you've played multiple sports. Am I right in understanding you played quite a bit of golf too when you were younger? Golf, yeah. yeah. Um, I was thinking about this today. Like golf was my main sport yeah. coming over to Australia and then again through meeting friends and whatnot, um, transitioned and channeled into rugby league. Then through oppo- an opportunity played union but always – Always like touch, rugby league, union, golf. They were my main sports. Um, I get, yeah, just just played everything. Just was someone that loved sport. Um, my parents gave me every opportunity to play every sport. And then, yeah, obviously growing up in Queensland, rugby league's culture there. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad I did. I'm glad that I stuck with rugby league and have stuck with it for so long. There was definitely other opportunities, but I'm, I'm happy where I am now for sure. Nice. And you made your debut at Cowboys. Cowboys, 18. 18. Uh, I yeah. think I remember the game actually, that yeah. little run down the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, things happen so fast when yeah. you're a kid, when you're 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, I found out that debut that I was debuting the night before or two days before. Um, happened so quick. I don't. I, I didn't really understand what I was mm. doing, I think, at that yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. What I was walking into – Elimination final, the team had been through 24 rounds to get to that and I just come in and play this elimination final, win, go on to next week and we lose. And I probably just thought that's how, that's how it was. That's like, your entree mm, into the like space. Yeah, yeah. This is easy. Like this is this is easy. And then that next year um, I only played six games. Yeah. And I probably got a little bit frustrated. Yeah. Probably thought I was ahead of where I was. Physically and mentally. Yeah. Um, Cootie was the fullback at that time and he's a he's a freak. Like yeah. the career that he had. Um, but I was just a kid that wanted more and yeah. Um, so that's why I signed with Knights because yeah. I wanted to – I didn't want to wait behind people and um, hope that I was going to get an opportunity. I wanted to do it myself, learn myself, learn the hard way. Yeah. And then so I went to the Knights when I was 19 in 2018. Yeah. So – and then that year is just like a whole other story. And, yeah. Um, 20, 2018 when I went there, I was 19, turning 20 or – yeah. And that was probably the most success, successful year apart from last year that I've had. Mm. I was 19. I think I had um, – I was Dally and runner up that year and everything was happening so easy. And like I was playing great footy. I was going out every weekend um, and I just probably wasn't living – the life of a real professional athlete. Yeah. Um, I've always thought things happen so easily because I have for the last two or three years and I reckon that set me up for a, a negative or a bad couple of years after that. Yeah. Probably fell into a little bit of success syndrome. Um, I got complacent. I thought things were going to happen. But I learned, I've learned from that period. Like 2019 probably wasn't my best season. 2020 wasn't. 2021 yeah. getting there. And then probably these last couple of years I've been happy with. But, yeah, when when you're living a life like that, that's not sustainable. Absolutely. And then you, you develop this mindset that it's easy. You can like, – I look back and I can understand why I went through that. Not that I'm proud of it, but now that I'm older, um, yeah. I can definitely acknowledge that that was my mindset. Yeah. Well, and I think that takes, again, levels of 
humility and honesty to look back and go, actually, I behave like that mm. and I understand why and now I've learned from it and this is who I am. And I think, yeah, to your point of like the last few years, it seems like you've really implemented those lessons and also like, you know, we we're just talking about it uh, offline. Like you had a lot of projects on too at that yeah. point in time. Like you're doing a lot of things. Yeah, and then, being a kid. Yeah, totally. You've got all this like stuff coming at you for then you'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll get involved. Yeah. And then you get a little bit more discerning um, as you mature through the Definitely. ranks. You, you learn where to prioritise your energy, which I think has been a big thing for me these last couple of years. But when you're 19, 20, 21, you'll start a clothing brand here. Yeah. Start another one over there. Fail, fail. Yeah. Start a podcast, fail. Yeah. Um, and that's just a part of being that age, I think. Yeah. But now that I'm like, I'm older, I'm 26, again, I just try and focus my energy on what's important or what I think works for me. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, I've learned that over years. Yeah, absolutely. If I knew that when I was 20, I'd be like. Well, that's all part of it, it isn't is, it? It's yeah. like tasting, you know, all the different flavors at the buffet mm. <laughs> and realizing what you want to go back for seconds for. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you grow up, yeah. you learn from your mistakes and yeah, I think I've done that now. I've and, done a fair bit of that. Continuing and, continuing to do that too, like I'm sure I'll make a few, a few more but absolutely, you'll learn from them. And so maybe let's just like go down that a little bit. What what are some of the tougher times where you've had to navigate? And, and the reason I ask this I think is because I really want to lose the, the buffer of like athletes or these like polished perfect human beings. It's like now you're living this life trying to navigate how to get through and mm. weave through just like everybody else but what would you say were some of like the tougher times where you've learned the most in my career yeah um oh, and and your life if if that resonates i think career wise there was a did something a couple of years ago um i think the the accident itself it was it is what it is but i think my mindset was what let me down i think i forgot my responsibilities mm. i forgot or I was, or I was arrogant and didn't appreciate or didn't value my responsibilities. Yeah, um, and that that and like that resulted in me putting myself in a bad position, which then I've learned now affects more than just me. Mm. Like what I did in that period, which was twenty twenty two, um, you know, I got I did I, did, I got video that I was walking out of a toilet and yeah. I think I just yeah forgot my responsibilities for you know for a second and um, put the team and the the club and my teammates probably under fire more yeah. than it did me yeah and it yeah, affected sure. them it affected my family and I definitely learned from that period yeah um, and I'm glad like I'm not glad that it happened no. but you learn from for those sure things. yeah and I think it's like if it didn't hurt so much you wouldn't know all the things that you know now that you mm. would never do again mm. and sometimes it takes this kind of face planning to work it out definitely um and because someone can tell you that lesson but until you live it well yeah mitchell pierce who's yeah he, we all know he's been in the media quite a bit yeah you'd look at what he what he's been through and you wouldn't you don't really understand and that yeah i haven't been what he's been through on a full scale but i got a taste of it yeah um and i definitely learned from that that experience so that's probably one or the most – that was probably the darkest few yeah. couple months that I've had in my career. Yeah. Um, another one was when I got concussed and I was looking at retirement. Yeah. That was a scary one. That was a scary moment for me in my life, yeah. you know, and in, and in my career, professional career. Um, just, just, yeah. Because that was a number of concussions in the season, right? I had – I had a few back to back, so I had like yeah, four or five. That's right, yeah. Then I had to have a rest, and then game two of that next season, I had a real bad one. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Now, yeah, that period was scary. Obviously, being faced with having to retire. Yeah. Um, and I think just the media pressure that was on me and my family and the doctor was like a lot of people were calling for me to retire. Yeah. Which it's funny how when something like that happens, <laughs> everyone's a like a neuroscientist or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, the expert, armchair experts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's an expert apparently. So that was scary. I mean, just sitting down with my parents, the reality was I go to Canada and there's two options. I retire or I come back and I can play. Wow. So that was, um, that was pretty scary. That's yeah. full on, man, because it's not only a career orientated, it's life orientated. It is life. Yeah. It's, 
I think look about like I look at my life and what I've worked so hard to do. Is, yeah. You know, when you're a kid, you just dream and aspire to be a professional player. For me, in any sport, then now that I'm in it, my dream and goal is to you know win a comp. Yeah. This is so if that got taken away from me, it would have to be like this whole new identity. Like, who? What, what's my purpose? Who am I? Who, like, absolutely. Where do I find? Um, I don't know. Like my my happiness or where, fulfillment. Fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking like. Where do yeah. I find that? And I say, I say, when I was in that position, I was saying, oh, I'll be fine. Um, I'm not someone that will just lounge around. But until you're in that position, you don't really know. Yeah. So that was the reality that I was facing at that point in time. And had, did you have support around you, like where you can actually talk about this? Or I had my mum and dad, yeah. my best friend. And, and were you open with them or was it mm. something you kind of internalised a bit? No, I was definitely open with my mum and dad Yeah. and my best friend. Yeah. Um, those three people probably the only like even in different situations in life, yeah, are the ones that I've told everything to, tell nice. everything to, and trust, yeah, and and value their opinion, yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely know how I was feeling through that period, um, and that was a that was like a three week, four week period. Um, so, but got to Canada, got the all clear, um, did some tests, met everyone over there, and and came back with a lot of reassurance and positivity and confidence that I could play again and mm. then you yeah go on this run and, and have a good year but those two those two moments are probably the biggest and then in my life um my brother passed away when I was young oh wow so he 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 um he drowned actually in like a sewage tank oh, when I was six or seven okay so that has had a massive impact on our family yeah. and probably explains why we are the way we are in terms of how close, how supportive, um, how loyal we are as a family. Yeah. And um, and how old was he, man? He was 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. So he, he passed away, which is, yeah, yeah. It is, like, it's, oh, been, it's pretty tough. And do, do you remember that time? I do. I yeah. was about seven. Yeah. Um, that was why we moved back to New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, cool. And yeah, look at the way my mum and dad handled it. Mm. I don't, I wouldn't, I, d- I knew what was going on, but I don't think I understood fully, well, I wouldn't have, mm. the, eff- the effect and the impact it had on them. Yeah. Um, but that probably explains like why they just did everything they could for me and gave me every opportunity they, they could for Absolutely. me to, you know, achieve my goals and, um, in a position to to, to thrive and, and to succeed, I guess. And then my sister was born, and then she so she came along, and the whole world changed in a good <laughs> way. But um, yeah, I, that was probably that's probably in, in my personal life that's one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I just think this. First of all, thanks for sharing that. I know it's deeply personal, so mm. thank you. And also just to listen to how your family navigate it was go back to community. You back know, to family. Back to family, back to the roots and mm. be around that for however long it takes. And as you said, no wonder they've, um, you know, protective of you particularly. Yeah. You know, your dad's just still. Just everything, yeah. Yeah, and just, you know, I think it, one of the tragic things is it's like they say often it takes a tragedy for us to unite. And it's yeah. like until something happens we don't really wake up. I'm like, wow, what's actually important to us? We've said that before. Like it's unfortunate the reason why you get everyone together is usually for a funeral or yeah, exactly. a bad ex- something bad to happen. And yeah. We've had a few of those in our family and my uncles and aunties and cousins mm. and that's the reason why everyone gets together. Yeah. You know? I know. Otherwise yeah. you, you don't really get everyone together for a birthday or Yeah. It's something tragic. It's not as important. Yeah. So yeah. It's, so it is unfortunate that that's that's the reason why. But um we've learned a lot like we we are the way we are because of that. Yeah. Um so, yeah. And do you think for you that's changed your, like, obviously it happened when you were younger but it's such a pivotal part mm. of your story. Do you think that's changed how you move through the world? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, um, like I'm very, everything will be okay, everything will be fine. Mm. Not much really phases me. Yeah. I feel like when you go through such a tragedy like that, now everything that happens isn't really that bad. Um, yeah, which is I think a, um, a good way of looking at it yeah. um, because that was such a 
Like then she doesn't know if it gets any worse than that. Oh, like, for sure. Um, but yeah, so now when I look at things, it's not really that bad. Like I'm pretty grateful. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's definitely shaped who we are as a family, like our family, and yeah, our, you know, this. My mum, bet my dad, my sister's definitely shaped who we are. Yeah, I think it puts so much in perspective, right? Mm. It's like, and you know, I really come from this belief system of like life is despite the tragedies or adversities, like life is happening for us, not to us. Mm. So if we come from that point of view, it's like everything is a part of it and I can navigate the harder times knowing as tragic as they are, you know, we'll come together, we'll grow, we'll be better, yeah. you know, and yeah. stronger. And just unfortunately how this random life we're in is designed is sometimes mm. it's the hardest times that are the most potent teachers. Yeah, it is unfortunate. Yeah. And... um You've also like quite, we were kind of talking about this at the car and before, like we're in a time now where players like yourselves are way more of an individual than like ever before. It's yeah. like, I think it's amazing, right? You see the unique personalities and, you know, you're interested in culture and like photography, fashion, brands. Um, how has that played out in like being, a, you know, having a profile but also being this individual where you've got all these different hobbies and things you like mm. getting into? How do you how do you navigate that? Um, I think when I was young, I just – I was young. Like I was young and I, I'm quite a curious person I guess. Yeah. Um, I enjoy doing different things and seeing what gives me joy. Mm. Whether it, and it's more around that creative side of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I've been exposed to social media for so long, so I guess I, I sort of know how to, like you say, navigate that. Um, I know what my brand is. The only thing that probably annoyed me, or it's it's okay now, but back probably when I was younger, like twenty, twenty one, twenty two, because my off field was never really about footy. I've never posted all that much about footy, and the perception was that I don't really care about footy. Oh yeah. So that. That would annoy me because it's like, well, I'd, I'm Kalen Ponga, the person first. Totally. And then, you know, I play footy. I love what I do. I'm very dedicated and committed but I also have a life. And if you want to watch me play footy, watch TV. But if you want to watch me do other stuff, follow me on, on short, for social media. Well, that became the perception for a little while. You know, people were saying, like, do you really care? And when they'd meet me because of my – like persona and how I am, they'd be like, oh, he doesn't really care. But that, so that, that annoyed me. That did, that did annoy me for a little bit. But I think everyone knows how dedicated I am now. Um, but I just do things that I enjoy. Yeah. And I, and I post things that I enjoy. Um, and I think the new day and age, these yeah. new athletes coming through who are expressing themselves more. Yeah. Uh, it, you, it, you can have, you are a person first. Yeah. And, that's what social media is for. It's a, it's a tool to be able to show that. Um, but it's definitely growing in Australia. There's still, like we were talking about it, the tall poppy, tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. Which is still there. Yeah. It's always going to be there, I feel. Um, but you need to express yourself. Like it's it brings character to the game. It brings excitement. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess when I was young, I just didn't really care. I just did what I wanted. Which is, you know, you tie that to like masculinity as well. It's like men have lived this very narrow confine. Like the script of being a man has been like so mm. like tight. It's like. Especially in our sport. Particularly in rugby league. Yeah, like it's why. like be tough, be strong, show no emotion. 100%. Yeah. Tackle the biggest guy on the field, get concussed, get up and keep playing. Play, yeah. the, play the grand final with a broken arm. You know, it's like. Be these, tough, be strong. Yeah. And then, you know, you people leading the charge like you is like leading with like individuality expression authentic authentic being authentic which is something that i really do try and yeah push but yeah definitely i'm not afraid to i'm not soft but i i'm not and it's not i'm not i'm not perceived as soft but you know a lot of the other things outside of yeah. sport that i do doesn't align with being tough and like i enjoy painting and, and i enjoy taking photos and that sort of stuff and i've never cared yeah <laughs> like what yeah. people think and like I th they've seen the way i play footy it, yeah it, they it doesn't really matter i don't think and but it is it, it's i think it's definitely changing we had this conversation it's a sport is changing rugby league players are, are, yeah. are driving it um you look at like nico hines you know and what he's doing big time he's definitely opening up the conversation and i think it goes a long way in performance as well mm. is being open being who you are having yeah. those conversations and 
I've always pushed it. I've never really pushed the conversation, I guess, but I've always pushed like doing whatever is you, like yeah. being who you are and being like that and being that off the field. Which is like you can't like – I know you're just living it doing you but like the impact, the ripple effect on what that does for the next generation of like, you know, in this context, boys and young men who are watching – you know, an icon of theirs or a role model of theirs actually express themselves, mm. you know, be authentic but also be vulnerable, yeah. that just gives permission for a whole generation that they can do the same, Yeah, which is pretty special, man, because we probably grew up with like, you know, the schoolyard, don't be gay, don't be a girl, you know, mm. toughen up, mate. And then it just it was so constricting, you know, and yet this – like I remember <laughs> in year nine I – did some art project and my best mate was like, that's a bit gay, mate. And I was like, well, I'm dropping art, you know. Yeah. And now I'm on this journey back to like reclaim my creativity back. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, yeah. with like stuff that matters, it's like finding ways to like bring in art and culture back mm. in. And, yeah, I just think like to your point, like you having this avenue of just being authentically expressed is so important. Also, for as you were saying, for your mental health as well. Yeah. And coming back to what you said earlier, like you're more than a player and like you're more than a win and you're definitely more than a loss. Yeah. I've, I've, I've struggled with that in the past. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've definitely struggled with that. I'd, there was a couple of years there where like that was um, – I would get tied down in the 80 minutes on the field. Yeah. And, and value myself off that. Yeah. And whether I won – when I was younger, I didn't because mm. I, it's not that I didn't care. But I had this outside life. Yeah. Right. So I, I, was the, I was the person that played footy and as long as I worked hard during the week, that, that didn't affect me. But then as you get older, you get scars, you know, social me- uh, like media put pressure on you. Maybe you've had a few bad years of playing. You get scars and then that 80 minutes does sort of – become your your source of value it's how you see yourself and i struggled with that a little bit i think newcastle is a, a small town so they definitely um yeah. expect you to win and, and whatnot like if we won i'd be down the beach coffee in hand happy days walking around yeah if we lose i'm probably not leaving the house that next morning so wow but it's just it's again the work that i did with um a mental health like a mental coach yeah you're a person first yeah like it shouldn't matter what happens in that 80 minutes. Yeah. You're still a person. Like, yeah. And that's – I think that's why I'm really at peace now because I understand that. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? It's like even – it's like attaching identity to performance. And so like I win, I, my happiness goes up, I lose, my happiness goes down. But mm. like you're still the same person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's, it, it's like this trick, isn't it though? It's like – and we're so – it's almost like we're – I think we are like neurologically wired to – remember the negative challenging things the most which i think must come from like some survival psychology of Mm. like being out in the jungle right and you're like okay if i make one mistake i'll get eaten yeah Yeah, so it's like there's something in our wiring there that you know i'm sure for your career some incredible successes you know but then also you've probably got some really tough times that are equally as loud in the head noise department definitely like we spoke about a couple of those things um but i've never really been driven by Running away from things. Mm. It's more running towards. Well, yeah. More, more chasing. What do you mean by that? Um, like I don't really my, – my, my drive isn't to prove people wrong. Yeah. Um, it's never he said this about me so I want to do this. It's yeah. more I, I sort of know in my mind where I want to be and what I want to do and I have since I've been young and that's always been my drive. Mm. So in terms of like fears and negative moments, yes, whilst I've learned from them, they're not my driving source. Yeah. It's more I want to prove my family proud or myself oh. proud and um, yeah, that's always been my driving force throughout my career. I think that's the way, you know, because they say that like those who – this is like the high performance dilemma. It's interesting, yeah. In, in people who have pain as a motivator, it's like a finite resource. So eventually if you achieve the thing you want to achieve, it's not going to be enough. And that's kind of like, yeah. And, and also it's like the goalposts keep moving. They do. So you suddenly got to keep <laughs> going. my old man says all the time. Right? He loves that thing. Yeah, and it's true. And that's why it's like, you know, you talk about extrinsic motivation, which is like outside of ourselves versus intrinsic motivation, which is inside of ourselves. Like I want to make my family proud. You know, I want to mm. be happy with how I played the game opposed to the outcome of the game. Yeah. 
you know, they say like yeah, fall yeah, in love yeah. with the process as opposed to the outcome. It's like these are all the like secret breadcrumbs of like f- happiness and fulfillment, not just like material success. Yeah. That's yeah. so transient, you know. You could get, definitely get caught up in that though. For sure. Well, mm. how, how do you navigate that? Because it's so seductive. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's just uh, again, probably back to that perception of what I was like was like, like why is he doing it? Like, why does he does he care about the game? Um, and I guess going through that period now, I do I hundred percent know that it's not it's not about all that sort of stuff. Like, it definitely yeah. comes with it. Um, but the satisfaction you get emotionally mm. outweighs the satisfaction you get from earning or having something you know yeah. you when i was a little kid and my goal was to play at the highest level that was always what do you call it intrinsic intrinsic motivation yeah, yeah. it was always it's never been about other things so it's just realigning yourself with with, with that yeah because it can't and everyone's got different motives for some yeah. people it might be different but that's always been mine and what were some of the other things you learned with your like mental uh, mental fitness coach, yeah, we'll just call him that. Mental skills coach. Mental skills coach, yeah. Um, he was awesome to be honest. I got him at the end of that season when I I forgot my, what my responsibilities were and probably a little went a little bit off track. I reached out to him to help me. Um, I probably was in a pretty bad mental space, mm. just wasn't really happy with – well, I wasn't happy with myself at all. Yeah. So um, then he come on board and he – it's just his ability to articulate certain theories and make it practical for me. Mm. Um, but he was big on you're a person, you're Kalen. If, you know, you have to do what makes you happy outside of footy and then um, that will translate onto the field and transfer onto the field. And he, t- he actually, like, he was he did a lot for me, to be honest. It's hard to sort of really pigeonhole what he did. But he was big on you're a person first and making sure that that person's happy, making sure that person's fulfilled so then you can go and perform on the field because if it goes hand in hand, like yeah. you can't be happy on the field and step off and live this life that you're not proud of. Yeah. So that was I worked with him for a year, um, had my best year, my most successful year. Yeah. And still talk to him now, but I think he gave me so many tools that I don't really, I don't talk to him as much, but he gave me a lot of tools that I now carry yeah. with me and and definitely implement like day to day. Yeah. Um, yeah, in, in the season. Which is actually the, a reflection of a good coach is like they embed you with the tools and the strategies and skills so you're ready to go. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. reflection back on him. Um, and in regards to your mental health, like we're now in an age where guys like are talking much more about their mental health, which I think is just so important for so many reasons. Have you navigated like the ups and downs of, mm. of the mental health journey? I think I've been pretty good to be honest. Um I've adopted this mindset and it was probably – it was a few years ago now and my, me and my best mate talk about it all the time is just try not to ride the highs and try not to, to ride the lows as well. Try and stay in between or somewhere in between. It's a little bit like when you think you're going better than you are, life will find a way to knock you back down. So yeah. just try and stay <laughs> so – just just relax yeah. sometimes. Like yeah. if you win a few on the road, like you're not the man. Like just yeah. relax. Just try and stay neutral and – it was um, Russell Wilson, his coach, did a podcast or, or an audio book and they spoke a lot about that as just staying neutral. And so I do try and carry that with mm. me through different moments in my life because the, the world that we're in or I'm in is so up and down. Like One week can be the best week of your life and the next can be the worst if you let it be. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, yeah, just trying to stay neutral and trying to always stay in that little, little grey area, I guess. Mm. Um, I think my support has always been a tool that I used d- during those times. Again, like I said, I've got my mum and dad who I'm quite all very close with and I have my best friend that I've known for 10 years and I know that um, he wants what's best for me and always has. You know, and he's, yeah. he's someone that I trust deeply. Um, so I think that's just been a big one for me is that support, having that support around me. Um, but I'm co- yeah, you're continually learning. Mm. Um, and I've I've been in the league now for eight years, and so I'm kind of I feel like I'm in a really good position now. Like I've yeah. learned a lot over those eight years, and I'm excited by hopefully the next eight. Cause yeah, I'm about halfway in my career. So, but in terms of yeah, mental health, I've 
I've I've had my lows and I've, I've had my highs, but just trying to stay stay neutral. Stay neutral, yeah, and just come back to as you said, like your core pillars of like family, trust unit, like I'm sure moving your body, getting active, mm. all like different types of yeah. medicine. I know yeah. I know certain things that I guess keep me aligned now. Yeah. Um, I guess I never really used to be consistent with my lifestyle. Yeah. And my routine, uh, and that comes back to discipline and. Yeah. I like to being disciplined with that sort of stuff. When I was a kid, or even probably two years ago, I didn't have a routine or I wasn't living the life of someone that's healthy, happy and wants to perform at a high level. Yeah. But now I do and I'm very consistent with that and I enjoy enjoy that. And I feel like whenever I stray away from it, like I want to get back onto it. I yeah. want to get back into my routine and, and living, a, living a life that's aligned with what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, so that's been for the okay, I wish I knew that when I was twenty two. Yeah. It would have been a lot easier back then. But I'm glad like I, this is the way I am now. Which yeah. is, is because of all those le- uh, learnings. Yeah, well those, those daily grounding practices like really just set you up for success. And I, I totally know it when you're you you're in a rhythm with it and when you're not doing it, your body misses it. Mm, you're like, I, I gotta get back into that. I just feel a bit frazzled. Yeah. Yeah. And ice baths are big for you, hey? Sauna, ice bath. Yeah. Do that every day. Like sleeping, go to sleep early. Nice sleep hygiene. Morning routine. Like solitude. I used to be someone that couldn't be on their own. I'd have to FaceTime a friend. Like that's not. There's no peace. There's no comfort in that. So I, I enjoy being on my own now. Um, yeah, I've just slowed down. I think. Yeah. I'm just a lot calmer and. Yeah, just I just appreciate different things now. I guess. Yeah, and it's it, it's kind of I, I think about these things as like perfect when they arrive it's like you're ready you know mm. and it's like you try to squish all that routine down to a 22 year old who's kind of got the yeah, world at his fingertips the shop. yeah, yeah. Um, he's just living a life that has happened so quick for him yeah yeah you don't really know what to do like i lived with connor who yeah. was who was two years older than me yeah when i was like 22 yeah 21 he was about 23 and he was starting to do he was starting to transition into that. Yeah. I look back now and I can see that. Like he was starting to do ice baths and saunas and I was like, well, why would you want to do that? But now I appreciate not only the physical um, benefits from them but like the, the mental, the, yeah. everything you get from those sort of things. So it's funny. It is definitely a transition period. And But yeah, looking back, he was definitely doing them before me. Yeah, it's interesting how we have those like – you know, role, really call them role models or just like teachers, even if it's in your peer group where we're suddenly just picking up messages from them. So I'm curious, like, have there been positive role models in your life? Like obviously your dad's mm. a big one, but who else has really shaped you or been able to kind of hold you or support you through, you know, the high highs and the low lows? Yeah. To be honest, like to be my hero and my biggest role model, my my idol since I can remember is, will always be my dad. Mm. Um, I didn't really watch sport growing up. I didn't watch golf. I didn't sit down in front of the TV and watch players. Yeah. I just wanted to be like my dad. And everything, like all the values, all the lessons, everything that I am really is because of my dad. Um, yeah, just like a lot of things. Like just the passion that I have, the love for my sport, um, the hard work. Through some tough lessons, obviously. Mm. Um, but I just, it is all because of my dad. Yeah. And I, like, I, I'm glad, like, I'm glad that that's the way it is and how it is. Like, I never really looked up to certain players and said, I want to be like them. Yeah. Obviously, I wanted to be in their shoes. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't want it to be me in their shoes. Mm. Um, I think now, what, like, where I am now, I definitely, um, I guess, idolize a player that's in our team and that's um, Tyson Frizzell. Yeah. Like I could talk, I could talk for a little bit. I, I think the way he he leads, the way he holds himself, yeah. the way he is on the field, off the field with family, I definitely look at him now and think like that's how I want to sort of mold. And he's not someone that talks a lot. He talks when he needs to, or when the the timing's right. I yeah. think he's very good at that. But he like he's just so selfless, um, dedicated, like loyal. Mm. Um, he works hard. He's someone that I look at now because I've never really – I've had great um, leaders and in, in, in different teams but I think right now I think Frizz is probably someone that I look up to. Yeah. 
Um, he's a little bit older than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not, he's a little bit older than me. So I think I'm, I'm okay in saying that, but uh, I definitely look up to yeah. him. Um, I think he would know that. Um, but yeah. Have you ever told him that? No, nah, no. Nah. Maybe on the piss. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but a couple of yeah, definitely right now. I look at the way he leads because yeah. he's like, I'm the captain of the team, but he's like the leader. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. He's like, he's like the dad. Yeah. But if he talks, I'm listening and we're yeah. all listening and. Yeah, I just – I really admire the way he goes about his work, life. Yeah, is. it sounds like he's in this place of balance, you know, like mm. how he is on the field and off the field. It's like a, it's in a nice ry- rhythm. And I think there is something about, you know, um, people of like – they don't have to say much but when they do it's like timely yeah. and thoughtful and intentional. They're definitely you just – You want them. You want them. You want as many yeah, of those yeah. around. But also for someone like you who holds like captaincy or leadership, it's like – but also you come with a lot of like extra other pressure and eyeballs. So the fact that you can lean on him is like, you know, almost like the the general in the troops, mm. you know. It's like they're the, the guys that I think are so understated but everyone knows how much you trust them. Yeah, you know, 100%. like they're the ones you want going into battle next to you. Yeah, like he, I think he just resigned last year and if he left – uh, like it would have been such a huge hole, not on the field, but just culturally. Culturally, yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely grateful for him. And I've got some other leaders in the mm. team and we've got a leadership group that I lean on. But yeah. in terms of role models, like my dad was just for so long and but yeah. now where I am and who I sort of look up to and, yeah, you know, want to be like, I guess, yeah, is, is sure. probably him. Yeah, yeah. And mm. he's just at that next level of life stage too. He you know, is. Doing the family thing. and Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's very happy. But he works so hard. Like, yeah. he, he never has a day off. Like, he's done it all. He's played for Australia. He's played mm. for New South Wales. He's done it all. Yeah. But he, he's the first person in there and the last person to leave. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I've taken things from different athletes over the years and sort yeah. of – Cherry picked. Yeah, cherry picked, but I've never really had one, I yeah. guess. I think that's a nice way to go because, yeah, it's like you, you get to kind of pick what's relevant to you at your stage mm, of the journey. What resonates with you. Exactly. At yeah. that point in time, take yeah. it. Because everyone's got something to give, like especially yeah. some athletes at the highest level. Yeah. It's quite – I enjoy listening to what they say. Yeah. So on that thread, how do you think about success for you personally? Like when you think of success, like what, mm. what comes up? such a loaded word. Success. Um, success. Success is kind of like the end product. I think mm. as long as I'm living and aligning my, I'm living by my values and aligning myself with the things that I can control, um, that's going to get me to success. Like obviously, if you're going to put a word or, or something on it, it would be a premiership. Yeah. But uh, like the truth is, I might never, I might never win one. So but I can only control what's in here and I can control um, like my routine, how I live my life. As long as it's aligned with, you know, where I want to be, then I think that's success. Yeah. Um, which I am now. Like I definitely am now. I'm in a period in my career and life where um, I'm definitely controlling what I can control and yeah. enjoying it. I love it. I love my lifestyle. I love the people in my life. Um, you know, my job allows me to consistently grow, consistently challenge myself. Like I love competing and, and those sort of things and that's the beauty of the job that I'm in and um, I think as long as I'm controlling what I can there, mm. being a leader, being showing up and being the best version of myself for my teammates, for the club, you know, those sort of things I can control and hopefully at the end of all that is success. Yeah. But um, – I guess success is that. It's right. just li- it's just living a life by that. Yeah, I, I really resonate with that. A friend said to me uh, recently that – I find that one hard. It's so tricky because it's also like there's the – I don't know, it's like the illusion that you'll get the trophy, you know, mm. and then you get the trophy, you're like, oh, well, then what's next? What's next, well, it's right? like, what's success? Yeah, and, that, and that's that's for me. I get, yeah, Some I'm, people might have like a – I don't have – or <laughs> I do, I guess, have that end goal. Like someone in business might say they want to earn this amount. Then when they get to that amount, the goal post shift. Absolutely. So uh, yeah. I, I, I watched, haven't even asked that too often, to be honest. Well, it's, I think it's interesting to reflect on, right? Because it's like I've watched countless celebrities. Like I was watching this like Will Smith clip and then Jim Carrey clip who both said the same thing differently. But Will Smith goes, I've bought myself everything that I've ever wanted on this planet. Everything that I've ever wanted, I've purchased. And I wish everyone could have that feeling because I realize it's not enough. 
That's not nice. <laughs> Is that nice? Well, no. it's, it's basically just saying like you can you can get a, a, accumulate as many materialistic things as mm. you want, mm. but I That's want them nice. to just know that that it actually it's about what's inside yeah. and like family and values that actually is what counts. Yeah. And it's like he had to learn it by trying to achieve so much. And yeah, a mate said to me recently that um, utopia, aka success, is the direction, not the destination, which is really yeah, yeah. Well, kind of what you were saying. It's yeah. like, you know, who I'm – and also who I'm going on the adventure with. Yeah, I well, think that plays a big part. Big part, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's – my version of success nice is, is that it's yeah i've never i don't think i've ever been asked that mm. because it is such a fickle yeah question it, it can be it's like yeah. and this comes back to that like intrinsic or extrinsic motivation right it's like intrinsic is like what's important to me versus like what do i want to get on the outside and they're not wrong it's just not knowing like i feel like the intrinsic one is more of a sustainable motivation mm. And the extrinsic is important, but it's yeah, it's a bit more like finite. It's like it kind of ends. Mm. I saw this thing. It's about like it's like goals. And I saw this thing um, just the other day, and it was it was like when you're younger, you set goals, and we all set goals. I'm sure you set goals as yeah, well. Yeah. But it's not so much about the goal because when you get to a certain period, which I am now, everyone's got the same goal. Yeah. It's about the habits. Yeah. That you that you have that you build that you use. That's what's important. Yeah. Because me and – well, I had uh, analogy. Mm. Um, everyone, when they're about to run 100 metres, they all have the same goal. Yeah. But it's about the habits that they've built nice. that will get them to the end. Yeah. And that's what life's about for me right now. Is it, it, Obviously, I have that goal, but it's about the habits, the lifestyle, mm. what I prioritise, where my energy is. That's what's going to get me to that goal. Absolutely. Mm. Another way that I've heard that be framed by, um, I think it's James Clear says that we don't rise to the levels of our goals, we fall oh. to the level of our systems mm. and our systems are made up of our habits, um, which I think is like, and, and there's also just recognising the humanness in that too, you know, it's like sometimes we fall off our habits, you know, yeah. or, you know, our system fails us and we have to pick ourselves back up but not make ourselves wrong. Yeah. You know, just know that like it's like if you meditate, you notice your mind gets so distracted yeah, and you're like, yeah, wow, yeah. I'm over there. Let me come back, you know, bring it back. <laughs> we'll but not judging, right? Because then you get stuck in this judgment loop. It's mm. like, oh, no, I'm judging myself. And then I go, oh, no, I'm judging myself for judging myself. Yeah, <laughs> that's one thing that my mental coach spoke about, yeah. acknowledging your thoughts mm. during different periods and it's okay to, to have those thoughts. Yeah. But yeah, he was he was big on that as well. Oh, it's, it's so good, man. It sounds like that was a really important kind of time for you and you know resulted in the year later winning the dally m right mm. it was that year yeah that year that's, yeah that's pretty cool which is yeah it is huge 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 moment for me nice man we'll we'll start to kind of land the plane uh, i just have kind of two questions for you one is um how do you think about the role of like vulnerability and also like masculinity mm. how do those two um topics relate in your life yeah I've, uh, I've spoken about before vulnerability. I think in a, in a personal and professional le level is the most important way to uh, fully connect with someone or fully connect with people. Um, you can't if you don't open up. You know you don't you don't know much about me, and then therefore um, you're not going to connect and want to do things like we can't build that trust, trust or. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that real deep connection and I think vulnerability is huge in a performance way mm. and the conversations are opening up. Um, but it is about breaking down that barrier and letting people in and then once you know what someone's like or about, yeah. you know, you want to do some more for them. Um, vulnerability for me, uh, yeah, and, and, and as a captain or as a, in, a, in a team environment, I think it's that's how I'd sort of push it. Uh, and masculinity, yeah, being authentic. Mm. Um, my first year as a as a captain, I thought I had to be this this captain that was like um, do all the right. Well, you yeah, do have to do all the right things, but I had to speak in every meeting. Um, I had to be this person that I wasn't essentially, and, and I put that on. I put a mask on for so long that by the end of the year I was burnt out and I forgot my responsibilities and mm. I wasn't someone that was true to who I am. And that's probably that pressure of masculinity being being this person that I wasn't. Yeah. So I learned from that, like just be me. Mm. Just be who you are, no matter what no matter who no matter what it is. 
Um, I think we're in a world now that everyone accepts everyone for who they are and that was what I learned that year and again, masculinity, like it's a part of, that's a part of it. Um, yeah, just not putting pressure on yourself in that sense. But I learned a lot from that year. Yeah. Yeah, and also just to reflect back, like having a leader or a captain that, you know, is living their authentic truth gives the permission back to others to do the same. And then you've got a healthy culture. Yeah, People feel like they can be the best version of themselves and also they're accepted, Mm. right? And then you create that belonging and it's like that's... Sense of belonging, yeah. Exactly, right? And that brings the best out of everyone. Exactly. Gives them value. Yeah. Makes them feel valued. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that <laughs> I went through that. I had to go through that to to learn that. Totally. Um, so that's a lesson that I, that I hold now. Yeah. Nice man. Uh, and when you think about stuff that matters to you, what are some of the things? Well, we've covered some topics today, but like, what are, what's the stuff that matters to Caelan Ponga? Um, right now, what matters to me? Um, I take pride in. Uh, the way I show up for my teammates, my club, um, I take pride in, in that. Um, the relationships I have with my friends, my family. Mm. All those other things that we spoke about, I mean like habits and those are little things that personally mean a lot to me but they tie back into I guess how I show up for for the boys and those around me. Um my dog. <laughs> sage? No, yeah, Sage. Um, yeah, probably that. I, I do live – a lot of what I think about is like I want to be the best version of myself for yeah. those around me. Um, and it means a lot more when you're doing it for someone else. Um, but I mean a lot, like a lot of little things mean a lot mm. to me. Um, but probably those things. That right, right now, it's just it, it is mostly that. Amazing, man. Well, uh, hey, I just want to say thanks. Like, Thank been, you. Yeah, super How special. How long are we – uh, three days. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Um, yeah, just wanted to say thanks for just being so real. Yeah, and and yeah, it's one thing to be able to kind of run into the stadium, whether it's you know at a national level or at origin level, but then to actually just sit down and meet mm-hmm. you and just feel your depth and your heart is like super rare. So I just want to reflect that back and um yeah man like there's so many people that look up to you and i think this will just kind of give them another perspective into you that you're Mm. more than the player but actually someone that really deeply cares about like values and community and family and just being the best version of yourself and being authentic and i think that's just like so unique and special so thanks for you know and sharing some of your stories with us too man thank you yeah they're real and i respect it a lot thank you (laughs)